Um, we're going to sing um, Love Lifted Me. I don't know if you guys know it, but um, Angela is supposed to be passing out the words. Sister Angela. Oh, thank you, Sir President. Amen. Amen. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. Okay, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Love lifted me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Please bow your head for a word of prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for another day, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, because you are good to us, Father God, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for just getting us here safely, Lord Jesus, to get some more of your word, Lord Jesus, some more of your food, Father God, some fuel, Lord Jesus, to get us through the week, Father God, Lord. We ask that you would just touch our pastor, Lord Jesus, Father God, uh, feed him, Lord, with what you want us to hear on tonight, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, Father, for your love. Lord Jesus, for lifting us up, Father God, Lord, for saving our souls, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask that you would just touch the people on the way here, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for the people that's watching over the internet, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for COA as a whole, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you for your grace, your mercy, Father God, your love, your kindness, your tenderness, Lord Jesus, towards us. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What are we talking about? Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Amen.
Let's go to, what was it, Timothy? First Timothy chapter one. Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. First Timothy chapter one. Amen. Hmm. You know, when you preach sound doctrine, you upset folks. Y'all know that? When you preach sound doctrine, you upset people. You upset people. When you preach sound doctrine, you make folks mad. You make folks see. Make folks see. Help people see their flaws. And, and humans have a problem looking at their flaws. Humans have a problem looking at their flaws. That's why so many people don't preach the truth. Amen? Because when you see the truth, and I still hear preachers saying set free. I wish they get that right and say made free. Well, I'm not set free, I'm made free. Amen? It's a big difference between made and set. It's a big difference. I want to go to verse 11. 10. Amen. I'm reading 10 because I just want the latter part of verse 10. It says what? Verse 10. The word of God is made for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured person, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, if it's contrary to the truth, if it's, if it's contrary to reality, if, if it's contrary to what is, Paul said, don't listen to it. It's no good for you. Amen. Uh, we, we ended up last week when I was telling you all about uh, men and women, I'm sorry, women and children going to be controlling the earth. Let's go to, let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Amen. The, and see, here's the other problem. Even though God is allowing things to happen doesn't mean He's in agreement with things happening. His, his in agreement is based on the fact that he want everything to come to a close so he can end all of this. Amen. Uh, that's his only agreement as to what's going on. It's not like he enjoys it. Like he said, when I chasten you all, he said, I don't enjoy it. He said, but I do it because that's what need be done to make you right. I don't enjoy I don't get no kick out of it. Amen. Chapter 30. Let's go to verse 8 in the book of Isaiah. And, and we know, and, and the reason I'm showing you all all of this in the old first to show you what is going to happen in the new. Because he said the Old Testament is written for our admonition, our training, our education. So God, so we'll know what God will do to us if we don't do right. Verse 8 says what? Now, go, write it before them in a table. And noted in a book. Now, why would God say write that so it'll be forever and ever? Because it's for us. Remember, He knows what's He knows what's coming. We don't. Amen. So God is saying, I want you all to, I want Isaiah, I want the writer to put this in a book. So when it happened, y'all will know I told you this is what going to happen. Does my mic keep going out, in and out? No. Well, it must be my hearing aids then because I keep going in and out and when I hear. Um, verse 9 says what? That this this is a what? A rebellious we are a rebellious people. Now why would somebody say that's not applicable to them when you know that you are rebellious. Why would he say that? 
Who in here know they're never rebellious? Who in here know they're rebellious? No, y'all be scared to raise your hand. You know you're rebellious. Amen. So who is he talking to? Amen. Talking to us. Amen. Lying children. <laughs> I like that. Rebellious people, that's the adults. We got lying children. Amen. Samaya, lying children. What else? Children that will not hear. We do not hear the law of the Lord. We don't hear the law of of the Lord. Amen. Read. Verse 10 say what? Which say to the seer, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us. Speak to us. Prophesy. Don't tell me the truth. Now let's go back last week when I was telling you how preachers are preaching to the millennium. That's what they want. They don't want to be told the truth. They want to be told that God is going to bless them. They're going to prosper. The devil, you're going to take back what the devil took. You're going to be rich. God wants to see you prosper and all that old food. That's what the people want to hear. And that's what the preachers are giving to them. Amen. Read again, verse 10. Which say to the seer, see not. Seer is the preacher. See not. What else? And to the prophets, don't tell us right thing. Don't tell us the world coming to a close. Don't tell us God going to kill people. Don't tell us God hate evil. Don't, 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 we don't want to hear that. Don't tell us that. Don't tell us that God don't like me when I sin. Don't tell me God will kill me. Don't, 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 don't tell me that God will send me to hell. Don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that. And if I hear that, I won't come to your church and I won't give no money. I won't help the church. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to go to church to be told all of my flaws and all of my evil way. Don't tell me nothing bad about my, because everybody bad, so I don't want to hear that. Amen. Amen. Speak unto us smooth. Tell me good stuff. Tell me I'm the child of God. Tell me God loves me. Tell me God want to see me grow. Tell me God want to bless me. Tell me God want me to have a house. Tell me that. Tell me smooth thing. Tell me. I want to hear smooth thing. Tell me that. And above all, lie to me. Prophesy deceit. I don't want to go to church for no preacher to tell me that God will kill me because I lied one time. Don't tell me that. I don't want to go to church and hear no preacher say, God will send me to hell just because I went and got some sex on the side. I don't want to hear that. Don't tell me my God will send me to hell because I went to a club and I had a good time and danced. And just because I enjoyed myself, I'm going to go to hell for it. I don't want to hear that. Lie to me. Don't tell me I can't miss church and go watch a Super Bowl game and it only happens once a year. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me I can't miss church for my, my, my 90th grandmama birthday party. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me I can go to hell for that. I don't want to hear that. Lie to me. Amen. See, when they say lie to me, they mean everything that's in the Bible, I don't want to hear nothing the Bible has to say. Because if you preach anything out of the Bible, you're going to lie. I mean, it's going to be the truth. So I got to tell you everything that's not in the Bible. So I got to read the scripture and misinterpret it. Going back to swerving. So I got to read the scripture and swerve about what it really means. I, I, I can't do that. I can't do I can't. I, I don't want to hear that from no preacher. And if a preacher tell me that, he's judging me. He don't know how to talk to people. He's mean. And God didn't call him. Because I don't want to hear that. Don't tell me I can't be gay and God still love me. Because God died for all of us. So that means I can keep doing what I'm doing. Because God died. Are y'all listening to me? How come I hear myself?
Is it because of on there? So what now? Wait a minute. Well, see, I, my hearing aids are Bluetooth. I hear everything. I hear me, and I hear me, and I hear me. So y'all got to redo something. I hear me through these. That's okay. I'll take them off. We got we to gotta work with that and fix that. How did you get these to come out on my hearing aids, though? Y'all hit something. That's all right. We'll figure it out. Remember, my hearing aids are Bluetooth wireless, too. So I don't know what y'all doing back there, but hallelujah. We'll figure it out later. So they said, lie to me. Tell me lies. <coughs> Tell me lies. Don't tell me the truth. Amen. Come on. Verse 11 said. Get, get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Call the Holy One of Israel. Get out of that Bible. Go read. Preach the promise book to me. Preach your book to me. Preach me your ideas and your thoughts. Don't tell me what God said. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear what God said. Look how they put it. Get you out of the way. Get out of that Bible. Go read the, 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 the Ebonic version or something. Go read the living version. Don't read the King James version to me. It's too hard. Go read the Bible way version. Amen. The homosexuals got them a Bible now. Go, go read the homosexual Bible. Don't read that truth. I don't want no truth. I don't want no truth. You go, you go, you go find another Bible that distorts the truth. Amen. Because you got preachers that say, well, you know, people struggle with the King James version. So I like this version. The living version, the new translation version. But get out of that real stuff. Don't, don't give me that real stuff. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That's why I used to tell people when they were, I was drinking, you know, don't, don't give me no watered down whiskey. I want the real. Either give me real whiskey or no whiskey. I ain't drinking no wine. Wine ain't no whiskey. Wine is Kool-Aid with a little alcohol in it. Amen. That's what, that, 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 that's what people are saying. Don't give me the real deal. Give me some fake stuff. Lie to me. Y'all reading it, right? Come on. Verse 11 again from the top. We in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 11 say what? Get, out of, get you out of the way. Get out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Swerve. What did Paul say? Swerve. Get out of the path. Get off, get off that bumpy road and get, we, listen, we going to the store and you ain't got to ride. We on our way to heaven. We ain't got to ride no bumpy, hard road. Put me on that smooth road. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What else he said from the top? Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease. Stop preaching Jesus. Stop preaching the truth. Stop preaching living right. Stop preaching. Give me some lies. Tell me. Fool me. Amen. Fool me. Amen. And see, and what the, what the jack leg preachers don't know, millennium don't support churches financially. They'll come in and give an offering when they feel like it. Tithes is out of the question. I'm not giving you no four or five hundred dollars a month. That, I'm not going to do that. So they get a whole bunch of millennium, one thousand, two thousand, and ain't none of them giving right. If they was to check the record, they don't give. Millenniums don't give. They give twenty dollars and say they've done something. Oh, I put, I give all the time. Check their records. 
But see, the preachers don't check the records no more. So just because they got 10,000 people, they think they're getting good money. No, the people out there is not giving right. I, I've had people say, I ain't going to no small church because then y'all will know I'm not living right because y'all will be able to see my giving. And y'all will know when I'm not at church. So I'm going to a big church so I can hide. Now, I've had people tell me that straightforward. I go to a big church so I can hide. So I can live in sin and, and the pastor can't catch me. But you forgot, God is always looking at you. That's why they're saying, get out of the way. Don't talk Jesus in my face and I won't get caught. Because they know where much is known, much is required. Amen. Talking about sound doctrine. Uh, what verse was that? 12? 11? Verse 12 said, wherefore? Thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye, because ye despise my word. Because you despise my word. And trust in oppressive, oppression and perverseness. Y'all like being bamboozled and you hang out in it. You don't, God is saying, y'all don't want to hear my, why would a, why would a God hang around when folk don't want to hear him no more. Why would he stay here? Why would God stay in this earth and folks are telling him, we don't want to hear you no more. Telling the preacher, get out the way. We don't want to hear. Don't talk to me about no Jesus. I don't want to hear it. Give me Buddha. Give me, give me uh, Confucianism. Give me uh, 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 Muhammad. Help me hate folks. I, I don't want to hear the truth no more. Amen. Wherefore, thus said the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise my word and you trust in, you trust in worrying about getting money. That's oppression. You worried about the economy and the stock market. Folks kill themselves when they go broke. But you don't want to, you don't want to come to Jesus. He can tell you how to deal with being broke. Folks, folk, folk don't want to deal with uh, a sickness and 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 hurricanes and earth. Folk don't want to deal with it. Don't 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 preach to me. Jesus coming back. Nature made that. Uh, uh, what that thing just happened in the Philippines? Uh, volcano. Nature did that. God ain't got nothing to do with that. Don't don't tell me God is coming. I don't want to hear that. Y'all y'all love dealing with obstacles. Out of your own intellect, instead of dealing with obstacles the way God said they were going to happen. God said, y'all don't want to hear my word. Y'all think this stuff happened just because the, the volcano got hot. I made that volcano erupt. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You despise my word and you love. Why do anybody love the fact that folk can get on TV and act like uh, see, this is the problem. Homosexuality. How, how can how come y'all love perverseness? Right. Amen. Why do y'all love that? All the comedians, every time I happen to see something about a comedian, they got to act like a sissy to get folks to laugh. Mm. Why you can't just laugh on a good joke? Mm. Why it's always got to be a feminine response in your joke? Wow, wow. Why y'all love perverseness? Why y'all love demonic movies and, 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 and as stupid as those movies are? Why y'all love stuff like that? Why y'all love pervert, perverted, perverted stuff? Everybody love perverted stuff. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Y'all look at the world. They love, per if it ain't perverted, they don't make no money, do they? Look at the, 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 these people. I don't watch them. I hear about them. All of these these uh, comedians, they say, if you ain't cussing, you don't make no money. Ain't nobody coming to your show. Why, why, why everybody got to cuss? Oh, hallelujah. Why every movie got to have sex scene? They naked in them now. They used to be in the old days, they go to kiss and they go to a commercial. Now, if they do that, they won't make no money. People want to see sex scenes. Oh, hallelujah. People want to see this stuff now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Perversed it, and he said, and you stay on it. 
You stay on it. You stay on it. Just about any movie you watch now, a sex scene, even the, the kids' cartoon. In other words, every time you turn on TV now, that's what you see. Shacked up, half naked, sleeping together, kissing and hugging, don't, it doesn't matter no more. God say, y'all, and y'all stay on it. In other words, y'all love it. Y'all stay on it. If y'all don't get it, you feel like it ain't worth, it ain't worth, it ain't worth it. It ain't, it ain't worth it. Give me some perverted, some perverseness. Isn't that a shame? And God say, now, y'all don't want me to tell you what to do. You want to live like this, and you want me to, and you want me to be okay with this stuff. God said, I'm not going to be okay with it. Hallelujah. Come on, verse 13. Therefore, we're talking about sound doctrine. Now, if you weren't here last week, I told you um, the sound doctrine is going to be hard messages on Wednesday for Bible class. Because we need to understand, y'all, if we don't get this right, sound, it's got to be the truth. You can walk out and do whatever you want to do, but you need to know the truth, why the world is turning upside down the way it is, because people just love junk. Nobody wants to do right no more. Verse 13 says what? Therefore, this iniquity, this iniquity is what's going to lead you to your fall. The breach. This is the bridge to your road. This is the road to, to the hell you're going to. This is the road. Your perverseness, your iniquity, your smooth things. This is what's leading you to where you're going. This is your breach. This is why you're going to end up in hell because you love this stuff. From the top, 13. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling it's going to get so bad. It's going to get so bad till there's be nothing else for you to see or hear. Because y'all building it up. That's why older people, whether they saved or unsaved, that didn't grow up, we don't even like watching TV no more. It's like, what's on? Ain't nothing on worth watching. Can't even turn to a decent program no more. Can't even, can't even watch a decent TV show. You sitting there enjoying the show, and then all of a sudden they in the bed. Like, come on, seriously, y'all didn't have to go to bed. <laughs> That's funny. You know why you got to end up in the bed? Why every show got to show a sex scene? Me and my wife is mad. We don't have sex every night. Some days we go two or three days and don't even kiss. But they, now we're talking about reality. But you got somebody on TV, every night they go to bed, they got to have this big, huge sex scene. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, lights. Uh, y'all sitting up here married like y'all don't. Well, maybe y'all do. I ain't going to question if you do. Hey. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 13 from the top. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling, who's breaking. He said, y'all going to get so built up with all of this stuff, I'm going to snatch. And in other words, the raptor going to come, and y'all ain't going to know that because y'all too engrossed in your perverseness. Y'all too engrossed in y'all 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 lying and stealing. And in other words, you see, you so locked in your sin, you don't even realize the rapture is here. You so hung up on money. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23. You so hung up on money that you don't even realize money is your ruin. You so hung up on pleasures, you don't even realize that's your ruin. You so hung up on stuff. Stuff. That you can't take with you when you leave here. Oh, hallelujah. Chapter 23. Let's start at verse 13. Now, let's start at verse 9. 
start laughing. Y'all know I do that. Y'all ought to be. You. When I pause, don't say nothing. You know I'm getting ready to find another verse. So you, y'all might well be used to that. So, okay, y'all, don't look down. We don't know where we're going. I might take you to a whole new chapter. Chapter 23, verse 9. Because I want you to understand, God is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you all of the Old Testaments, majority of the Old Testament. That's what Paul got it from. All Paul did was take the old and convert it to the new because the same thing they did, we are doing. He put it in our language because if it had been in, if, if the New Testament had been in this language to the old, they wouldn't have understood it. But see, it's easier for us to understand the old and the new because we, we, we get to look at both versions of it. Amen? Verse 9 says what? My heart is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man. I am like a man whom wine have overcome because of the Lord and because of the. He said, I'm jacked up, messed up, confused. Anybody ever been drunk and you all out of your mind? He said, that's where he's at. <laughs> when he see, when, when, when God tells him what's going on, he'd be like, man, what's wrong with him? Y'all know how when you've been drunk and you couldn't think straight? You just sit down and get drunker. Amen? He said, I am like a drunken man. I'm like a man whined and overcame me. I'm drunk. In other words, I'm so messed up the way God looks at us till he's just a shame. That's the way I am. That's the way you all should feel. It's like I'm tired. I'm tired of looking at a preacher talking about, I was talking to a friend of mine. He told me, he said, John, I was just leaving that church because I'm tired every time I go to church, tell your neighbor, touch your neighbor, tell your friend. He said, I don't want to hear no prosperity message. He didn't say, but he already rich. So how are you helping me? You telling me God going to bless you. Man, I got $2 million sitting over there that I don't even use. And you telling me to touch somebody. So where are you helping me at? Tell me how to put up with my wife because I don't feel like going home tonight. I'm sick of them. Tell me how to deal with these, these, these employees I got. Tell me how to deal with the guy that scratched up my car and talking about he ain't got no insurance. Tell me how to deal with that. I don't need no money. Amen. I can go fix that car. But why I got to let folks tear up my car and I don't get to say nothing? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So I ain't got no neighbor. <laughs> I ain't got no friend. So I ain't touching nobody. The brother said, I, I was, I'm, I, he said, I left the church. He said, I don't know where I'm going. He said, because I don't want to hear another message about touch somebody and tell somebody. And God going to bless you. And you got a house right around the corner. He said, I got five of them. And they're all right around the corner. So you ain't helping me. Oh, hallelujah. Prophet, prophet. Amen. Verse 10, he said what? No, let's read all of that. A drunken man, like a man whom wine have overcome because and because of the words of his verse 10, say what? For the land, the land, the land is full of adulterers. Oh, hallelujah. What else he said? For the because of the swearing of the land, because folk just lying and stealing. And conniving, everything is going downhill. Everything. Because folks ain't living right. Uh, Didi was telling me today, I didn't know it. I didn't know the reason you see so many people on the corner selling stuff. Apparently there's a law where you don't have to have license no more. Do, don't they know they tearing up the economy? How many of y'all in here got a job where y'all pay taxes? All of them folks out there making more money than y'all and they not contributing, keeping that road nice. But they ride on the same road that your tax dollar keep nice. And then they wonder why we short on money. And then they go file their taxes and they lie and get something they never paid. And the government is tired of chasing them. Oh, hallelujah. And I was telling Didi, I said, I said, Didi, I said, they be saying the rich folk do the same thing. Yes. But I'm going to show you how slick the rich folks are. They ain't crazy. The rich man will hold back a million dollars of taxes and won't pay you because he know you're going to get him. He'll wait till you catch him, pay you. But in the meantime, he took that million dollars. He didn't pay you and made more money off of it. 
Because he know if I don't pay you, I'm going to jail. Now, I ain't saying it right, but at least he know how to pay his bill. Y'all, you get half, half po folk, they don't want to pay nothing. Amen. Y'all tax dollars regulate the gas, regulate the, the cell phone. Y'all tax dollar does a lot for y'all. And these people don't want to contribute. Listen, so the land is mourning because nobody wants to do right. So you wonder why the bills and everything is going high. Because more folks is in the United States taking advantage of our goodness and don't know they're causing everything to fall. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it's all because we got liars, thieves, crooks. We got hustlers. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, first 10 from the top. For the land is full of adultery. For because of the swearing of the land morning, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Their course is evil. Nobody wants to do right. Nobody wants to do right. And then here's the problem with us, y'all. Church folk don't want to do right. That's where the problem comes. Church folk don't want to. Y'all, we're church people. We're saints. Can we do right? Can, can, we, can we pay our taxes? Can we? Jesus paid taxes. If he, somebody said he only did it once. How many times he got to show you he paid to show you he paid? Why you got to do everything 20 times to, for he, to show you? I, I ain't got no problem paying taxes because I know what he does. He said, God, remember, all law be of me. I set that in action so y'all can have these benefits. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And their forces is not right. Your reasoning of what you're doing is not right. It's causing the land to mourn. It's causing us, causing me, people like me, not even want to watch TV. Causing people like me don't want to go to certain cities. I don't want to go in Hollywood. Everywhere I look, there's a sissy walking around on the street. I don't want to see that. Oh, hallelujah. I don't want to go. I don't, me and my wife sometimes say, let's go out and do something. Everywhere you go, Beverly, there's a club. They playing a loud music. You can't go in the restaurant and eat out at a certain time unless you're in a nightclub. So I can't, we can't even go nowhere. We don't want to go to the movie. Ain't nothing on the movie but sex. Ain't nothing at the restaurant but drugs and alcohol. So where am I going to go? Go home. You got to go home and sit down and figure out something. <laughs> but I'm just showing that. Listen, now imagine, watch this. Imagine us, our limited ability to see and know where to go. How you think God feel? He ain't got nowhere to go. He ain't got nowhere to go. The land is messed up. He can't go and say, let me go over and talk to this family because they had club tonight. But I thought they were church folk. He can't say, let me go in this house and, and, and have them pray. I can't go there. They on the TV watching something. They ain't got no. So God said, I ain't got nowhere to go. Think about us, y'all. Watch this. So y'all don't think I'm, I'm just going off the deep end. The Holy Ghost inside of you. Don't it restrict you from going a lot of places? Where do you find yourself going nowadays? Nowhere. Because everywhere you're going, just so much evil. I don't feel like dealing with it. I don't feel like dealing with it. And folks, folks cuss like it's nothing. They, they, they think they can use what they call nice curse word. Well, I didn't know there was a certain thing as a nice curse word. Oh, hallelujah. Watch this. Verse 11 say what? For both the, the prophet and the, the prophet and the, the prophet and the, are both what? Profane. Neither one of them no good. The prophet's out there lying to get money and the priest is telling smoothing to keep the people coming because they don't swerve. In other words, ain't nobody doing nothing right. Where we going, y'all? 
We even have our church picnic, just our group, and we still hear folks all around us cussing like we okay with that too. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. Do y'all have problems going places? I know I do. You sit around, hold a conversation with somebody and think they're okay before you know it, they done cuss five times. And they think you're okay with that. I don't want to hear no curse words. Be enjoying a good, good, good movie. They be doing good. All of a sudden they start cussing. Like, where'd that come from? Why they feel they had to say that? Mm. Maybe y'all enjoy that stuff. I don't. That's why I don't have cable. I got rid of all that stuff. My son gave me some of these. I got control over that. And I'm finding that ain't that good. You know, because I don't want to watch a lot of stuff, y'all. Amen. The prophets and the priests are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their. We got more preachers are losing churches because of infidelity in the, in the house of God. They just can't keep their pants up. I don't blame the women because he already said silly women led, captive laden with sin. In other words, women are going to drop their drawers very easy for preachers. Now I'm going to say it the way he is. I told you sound doctor. Silly women led captive, laden with sin. What you think that means? I don't have to lock it. I ain't asking you to lock nothing. I'm asking you to see how God is saying. That's why God blamed the men. Men, what's wrong with y'all? You didn't have enough sex to know ain't no woman different. They're all the same. They're all the same. And somehow you keep doing this. He said, okay, I know, John, if she looks sexy, please talk to me. Let me help you look another way. But y'all won't even come to me. And then, so who that was telling me that they was listening to a preacher and he said it was okay to drink? Ain't nothing wrong with some Ain't nothing wrong with drinking a little cognac. <laughs> Give me a stick. Let me go beat him. I got saved to get off cognac and you're going to tell me I can go back and drink some. And y'all better not go join that church. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wickedness. Oh, this is wickedness. In the house. And then when the preachers get caught, they won't forgive me. Why didn't you come and confess when you did it like you want your members to do? You want your members to come in, do it Saturday night, <laughs> Confessing on Sunday morning, but you didn't did your three years and ain't confessed to nobody. Then you wonder why you messing up. Because you didn't do what the scripture said. But you won't, and then you get to the point, because you don't do it, you don't preach for them to do it. Now the whole church is messed up. Because you ain't you ain't telling nobody they going to hell for their adultery way. So everybody, that's why they, that's why he said adulterers are in the land because nobody is confessing. Everybody get to do what they want to do. Oh, hallelujah. And every now and then, you might tell the young folks, wait till you marry. And then you ain't going to say that too many times because of what you're doing. The, I watched it. I think I told you this last week. The region preachers don't preach sin because they doing so many. They doing so many. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my house have I found their wickedness, said the Lord. Churches are messed up. Preachers are messed up because they won't do right. I'm not saying preachers won't mess up. I'm saying they ought to limit they mess up. And if they mess up, just go confess it like anybody else will. That, listen, I preach to you all and to myself when I mess up, I'm going to confess something to somebody. I done, I done, I done gave y'all a lot of confessions. Say so y'all said, yeah, I got a problem with it and I'm working on it. And I'm going to preach on it too because I can go to the same hell you can go to. And I'm not going to hell. 
That's just a given. Amen? Amen. But I ain't going to never get up here and avoid something. I ain't going to never agree with no sin even if I do it. I ain't going to agree with it. That's why I preach on it so I don't do it. I'm like Paul. Half the time I'm preaching to me so I don't be a castaway. Y'all just happen to be listening. Amen? Amen. Verse 12 says what? Wherefore, their way their way shall be unto them a slippery. That's why, in other words, God is saying just like them, y'all ways is going to be slippery. It's going to lead you in the darkness. In other words, you're going to get caught. You sitting around, got a sin going on and ain't think you're going to get caught. Keep doing it. You're going to get caught. Because you're slippery. And the more you do it, the more bolder you get. And that's when you get caught. Because you done done it so much that you don't even realize you got to hide because you done got away with it so much. Oh, hallelujah. Why would a married man, watch this, see how stupid that is. Why would a married man have a cell phone texting another woman and don't keep it deleted? You think your wife ain't going to pick up your phone one day? You think Cassini ain't gonna look at that phone one day? You think you one day you're gonna be in the shower when the phone gonna be? She don't know you got a woman, and if and they beep, she just go see and get ready to give it to you and go real that. Wait a minute, Mary, I don't know no Mary, or vice versa. My wife can pick up my phone. I ain't jumping every time my phone. Matter of fact, I tell her, baby, see who that is. <laughs> Cause I might not want to respond to Mother Johnson today. See who that is. <laughs> now that's why it's slippery. Anybody that's committing adultery, I would hope you got sense enough to know your spouse gonna look at your phone one day. But because she ain't never or he ain't never looked at it, you done got carried away. She ain't going to look at it. You want to bet? God said, because you're slipping. You slide. That's when you get to slide real good. That's when she pick up the phone. Out of a, on a humbug. Y'all know what a humbug means. She wasn't spying. She had no reason to spy. Oh, hallelujah. My phone rings. Sometimes I don't respond right away. I'm most times because I don't hear it. My wife would say, here. So and so calling, and I used to answer. I don't answer if I don't recognize your, your name. Don't come. I don't answer no more. I didn't got in trouble doing that. Got more folks calling me. Somebody texted me today. Uh, they called me yesterday. Didn't leave no message. Then they text me today and show you how slick that these old people are. Uh, hey, hey, Bishop Portis, how's your day been? I'm still ignoring it. First of all, if it was one of y'all, y'all know not to say hey to me. Y'all do know that, right? Y'all better say praise the Lord. So I don't know if somebody listening to me now and know, oh, I'm going to change it. I'm going to say praise the Lord to your answer. Maybe, maybe not. Amen. But what I'm saying, y'all, y'all, y'all get so deep into sin, you go to slipping. That's why most people don't catch adultery in their, in their marriage till two or three years because they ain't had no reason to doubt you. And you got good at it. You got comfortable with it. You got caught. Watch this. I'm saying all that to say this. Y'all done got so good at your sin that you don't even repent and confess it. And that's why you're going to get caught. That's why you're going to get caught. Because you think, because you haven't, nobody caught you yet. Humans may not ever catch you, but God watches you every time you do it. And he's going to let you set yourself up to get caught. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <coughs> Come on, verse 12. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them a slippery ways in the darkness, and they shall be driven on, and you're going to keep going. What I've been explaining, you gonna, and you're going to fall in. Read, whatever. For I will. 
For wait a minute, read again. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation. God say, I'm gonna let you get caught when you get comfortable with it. I ain't gonna let you get caught till you get comfortable. Because when you get comfortable, you have no intentions on telling me you're sorry. So I have no reason to protect you. Do y'all know the only reason you don't get caught in sin when you confess and or repent is because you're telling God you're sorry. He protect you. He said, when you get comfortable, I ain't going to protect you no more because you're telling me that you don't care no more. So that means why should I? If you don't care, if you done got so bold in committing adultery, you done got so bold in getting drunk, if you done got so bold in watching pornography and you don't care if I know about it, so you don't come tell me you that you sorry for doing it, that means you okay with doing it. So why don't I let it out? You okay with me watching you? Why don't you let everybody watch you? Let's see how you deal with that. Oh, hallelujah. When you don't care if I see you, I mean God. God said, when you don't care, that he see you, why should you care who else see you? Because the only person that can punish you for this is me. And God say, you don't care about me seeing you. Why you worry about your spouse? Why you worry about your friends? Why you worried about your mama? What can they do to you? You don't care if I see you. Then why don't you let everybody see you? Who are you hiding from? Who are you hiding from? You hiding from your, your uncle? What can your uncle do? You more afraid of your uncle than me? Your uncle can't do nothing. Your uncle might join in with you. Because he might be doing the same thing you're doing. And you ain't afraid of me? God say, the day of your visitation, the day when you get so comfortable in it, that's when I'm going to let you get caught. Because you don't think it's a big deal no more. You think it's okay. You done slip and slip and slip right into it and get caught. Because you ain't hiding no more. There was a point. Y'all leave your mama alone. Pay attention to me. You done, you done slipped and slipped and slipped. It ain't no big deal to you. I'm talking about sound doctrine. Y'all better stop this sin. Stop sinning. Stop it. Because you're going to get caught. The only way, the only way he might, and that's a big might, he might not let you get caught is that you keep confessing it and keep repenting. But here's the, here's the trick to that. If you are truly repenting, you're going to get sick of repenting. So guess what that means you're going to do? You're going to stop doing it or you're going to stop repenting. Now if you stop doing it, praise the Lord, that was the goal. And you stop repenting, you're going to get caught. That's why you catch these preachers. He's still talking to you. That's why he's telling the preacher, so wait a minute. So why did you only snot and cry when you got caught by man? When man caught you, that's when you snot and cry. You never snot and cry with me. Ain't that what David did? When he had Bathsheba? And then Nathan came and told him, and he hit the dirt. Oh, Lord, forgive. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Long as you were doing it before God, you ain't saying a word. Not because I expose you. Oh, hallelujah. Why you only snot and cry when man said? <coughs> Why you don't snot and cry when God said? That'll make you stop. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 13 says what? I have seen folly in prophets of Samaria. They prophesied to Baal and they called. In other words, they telling them lies based on another God. Y'all tell lies based on another God. You know who that other God is? Yourself. Yourself. You're going to get up. I hear movie stars and preachers and everybody get up and tell me how God blessed them and then when they come out what, uh, uh, what really happened then they got a whole new story wait a minute 
I was telling my wife yesterday, I said, honey, I said, I don't know how did we got to the conversation. Somebody prophesied on me. Yeah. I said, I'm not sick of folk prophesying on me. Folk can't nobody prophesy on me. Don't know what God got me doing. You know, I said, somebody prophesied that God was going to give them another building in a couple of years and they're going to give me an L and I ain't got it yet. <laughs> so they don't, they don't know. I, I still remember that lie. I remember somebody told me, John, you ain't going to never have no church members. You too hard. Now, are oh, you doing good? I knew God was going to bless you. Okay, you don't remember. I remember what you said from day one. Wow. I remember this. Now, I ain't holding it against you, but I'm just saying. So, stop your line. Amen. I remember they said, when I reached my seventh year, oh, God got something great for you. Now, all of them are true. But not the way they impl it implicates it to be true. Because seven years, I did great. Eight years, I did great. 20 years, I'm doing great. 21 years, you know why I'm doing great? Because every time I, if I say one person, I'm doing great. If I can get one more person to come to church and get baptized, I'm doing greater. If I can get two, oh man, I'm batting good. If I can get three, listen, I'm hitting home run. I get four, I hit a couple of grand slams. So I'm always doing great, but not the way they and I say, oh, I can see in a couple of years you're going to have a, a big church with over three, 400 members. And I'm going, well, if I had it coming, I won't get it. Because <laughs> somebody to call it. Because if it happened, they're going to holler, I told you. See, and God ain't going to give you that kind of glory. So please don't prophesy on me. If anything, you're holding back my blessings. Oh, hallelujah. And see, and, and, and the reason you get these people to say stuff, because they see how we serve God, and they know ain't nothing but good going to come out of how you serve. Ain't nothing but good. But they trying to beat God to the punch. Well, you can't beat God to the punch. You can't beat him. The devil putting in their mind their own intellect, because they think they so close to God, that's their, that's their lie they coming up from Baal. Oh, hallelujah. So now God ain't going to let it happen because they're going to walk around talking about, ah, I knew that was coming. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, verse 14. I have seen also the prophets of Jerusalem and horrible thing. They commit adultery. They, they strengthen also their hands of evildoers that none does return from his wickedness they are all of them unto me they all the went sissy <laughs> and that's what he said Solomon and Gomorrah right I'm showing y'all something because I'm going to get back to the New Testament he said this is the way the world going to be when he come back look at the world y'all Folk want to look at Israel, look at the United States. Look at it. It's getting to the point, it got to the point that Lot didn't even want to come out of his house. Don't some of us feel like that sometimes? I don't feel like going nowhere. I don't, you, we don't go to a certain area because of what we don't want to feel like seeing. Oh, I don't feel like seeing that stuff today. I don't feel like hearing about it. He said, and watch this, the man is saying, I've seen all of this. I've seen the evil of the preachers. Look, he talking about church folks, y'all. Church folks. He ain't talking about sinners. Church folks. Church folks. He said, this is what preachers are doing. This is what priests are doing. Oh, hallelujah. If, 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 if somebody was to come along and say, or oh, Pastor Portis molested me. First of all, I ain't getting no lawyer because I don't need one. But let's say by some unstrange, un I mean some strange or unbelievable reason, I have to get a lawyer. And the lawyer gonna tell me, well, don't talk about it. What's not to talk about? Man, I didn't do it. Why I gotta be quiet? I gotta be quiet telling folks I'm innocent? And if I'm guilty, why is it now all of a sudden I want folks to pray for me when I've been doing it for the last 15, 20 years? Why didn't I just go get some prayer, stop, go to rehab, do something, 
is wrong. Oh, hallelujah. Talking about preachers. All these Catholic preachers, Baptist preachers, Pentecostal preachers, Presbyterian preachers. Why is it y'all only want to cry when you get caught? Man, you preaching to people, telling them not to do it. Now, I'm not judging you saying, like, I can't do it. I'm saying, God, help me. If I think about it, stop me. And if I do it, make me go to Bishop Douglas. Make me go all the way up to Bishop Lyon. Somebody help me. It's a problem. But here's the thing, y'all. We don't have, none of us have to let a, a sin get that bad in our life. Why you let a sin get that bad in your life? I was talking to, talking to the um, single, some of the single people. They made me feel bad. They feel like I'm not helping them. I said, oh, we're going to fix that. So I'm having a single seminar. Yes, I can teach it. I went along, I went a lot of years with no sex, no drugs. I ain't still ain't had no drugs. I know what it's like to be lonely. I know what it's like to not that. I know how to, listen, I can talk about this. And I can tell you how to wait too. So I don't need a stranger to come in and tell y'all what a bunch of lies. I didn't date nobody. And when I tried to date them, it didn't work out. So I don't consider that dating because I never got into it. Because God would let them say something to turn me off. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying, y'all? Y'all shouldn't have no sin that, let, that, that, that controls you like that. You got the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying the sin won't come up on you, but I'm saying you don't have to just bow to it either. You, listen, you watch this. If you can bow to it easy, is it hard to reach your pastor and say, I need you to talk to me two times a week about this? When I tell you, I'm a, is, is that hard? Is it not? Is that you can't reach me? You might say, I can't reach God. That's why he got me here. I'm in his stead. That's why he called me the under shepherd. We don't have to succumb to these evils that, that lurks within us or reminds us. We don't have to, y'all. We got somebody we can go to. That's why I preached about cast your cares Oh, hallelujah. We don't have to. We don't have to. Y'all young people don't have to go out and get pregnant. Don't say sex. You want to get sex and it's good. No, it ain't. No, it ain't as good as you think it is. Oh, hallelujah. It messes up. Y'all will start walking around here and can't say hi and be nice to one another. Because when sex get involved, it destroys a whole man. Sex... Hallelujah. I'm going to teach a sex class for all you young folks. And get your parents permission. Because y'all seem to think, y'all think, y'all seem to think sex is all of that. You can't talk to folks when the sex stop. You can't talk to folk. Am I right, adults? You can't talk to them. But before y'all got involved in sex, y'all had great conversations. Oh, hallelujah. <coughs> Did we read all of 14? Come on. I got to get I got to get to 17. Come on. 15 said what? Therefore, thus said the Lord, said the Lord of hope concerning the uh, let, 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 let me tell the prophets. Let me talk to them for a second. But I'm talking to all of us. Prophet, behold, I will feed them with and make them drink of the water of for the prophets of Jerusalem is profane. I'm going to mess them up. I'm going to feed them with bitter stuff. I'm going to feed them lies. I'm going to let them believe what they think is true. I'm going to let y'all believe it. You keep preaching lies. I'm going to let you believe your own lies. Come on, because I want to get through. Verse 16 said what? Thus said the Lord of hope. Hearken that prophesy unto you. If a preacher is making you vain, don't listen to him. I done told you I'm going to make them preach that. Because they want it. 
But don't you listen to them. So all these preachers that are talking about prospect, that's vain. Don't listen to them. Now why would you disobey me and go listen to somebody I done told you not to listen to? And then somebody want to say, I'm pointing out preachers. Yeah, I'm pointing out. Paul said, call them by name. Point them out. Vain. What else he said? They speak a vision of their own. They speak a vision of their own. They want you to get a lot of money. They want you to do crooked stuff to get money so they can convince you to bring them an extra $20. Remember one guy told me, he asked the pastor, he called me a liar. Uh, uh, and then he went and asked his pastor because I told him if he was going to get saved, he can't sell marijuana no more. Well, I give tithes. I said, that's good. And you're going to keep getting, you're going you're to make a lot of money because the rule is applicable no care what you do. The, the, the law didn't say if you pay tithes and you're doing good stuff, I bless you. He said, you pay tithes on anything, I bless you. So, yes, you pay tithes, God going to let that dope business flourish. So, and I told him, I said, but you're going to hell. I said, now, which one you want to flourish in business or you want to go to heaven? So he went and asked his pastor. And his pastor told him, well, man, as long as you're paying your tithes, you do what you need to do to survive. Man, if I, had a, if I had a saint in here giving me 10 grand a month, I'm going to still put you in hell, but pay your tithe on the money. And if you can go out and make another 10 grand, I'm going to put you in hell that month. Because you better pay your tithe. Because when you stop paying your tithe, your business is going to flop like anybody else's business. Y'all got this confused. He didn't say if it was evil or good. He said, I'll make you have money if you give me my money. But you ain't coming to heaven. So all of y'all that's here doing crooked stuff and making money, you're going to hell making that money. You can say whatever you want. Yes, I'm going to take your money. Because I ain't questioning nobody where they got their money from. That ain't my job. You know you owe God $100 or $10, you pay it, and he going to bless you. But know this. Know this. In paying tithes and offering, he never promised you heaven. He promised you prosperity on this earth. Never promised you heaven. I never let the devil give you too much, and I never let him take, but I never promised you heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hope y'all listening to me. Talking about sound doctrine. My goal, your goal, should be to go to heaven. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, read. We doing good, Lord. He stretched the time out tonight. Come on. Break, did we read all the 16? From the top, read. He said what? Thus said the Lord of hosts. Hearken, unto, hearken not unto the words of the prophet and that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak vision of their own heart and not out of the... God don't preach vainness. Vanity. God don't preach it. He don't preach it. Vanity and vexation, says the Lord. All is vanity. God said, I don't tell y'all nothing about vain. I, I don't preach vanity. Verse 17. They, they say still unto the, let me say that again. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord have said, ye shall, ye shall. God said, everybody that despise me is still telling y'all, you going to have peace. Hmm. You ain't getting no peace. That's out the box. The best peace you're going to get is filled with the Holy Ghost, living holy and living right. Now, that's some great peace that passes understanding, but you don't get that by living raggedy. Read from the top. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of, their, of his heart, no, no evil. God going to bless you. No weapon formed against you. Long as you live holy. You ain't, long as you be nice to everybody. No, 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 no. Go further than that. We going to have a, we going we gonna to pray for peace. God say, they don't promise y'all peace. God say, I ain't never promised you that. 
I'm going to show you all that next. God said, I don't know where y'all get that from. I never promise you that. Not the way y'all want to get it. I give you peace that passes all understanding whose mind is stayed on me. But if your mind ain't stayed on Jesus, you ain't getting no peace. Your mind ain't on Jesus. Now, let's be realistic. When you at work and, 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 and Beverly, you dealing with them crazy uh, veteran, is your mind on Jesus? Letitia, is your mind on Jesus? Now, it might get on Jesus when they get on your nerve, so you don't go off on them. But as a norm, your mind ain't on Jesus. You can't keep your mind on Jesus that, like that. It's, it's, it's just hard. I mean, you see, you work around them lawyers, your mind on Jesus, only when they make you mad. You going down the hall, Jesus better help me before I tell them off. But while they was going off, your mind wasn't on Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Then on the weekend, is your mind on Jesus on Saturday? Come on, say no. You run around trying to shop, grocery shop. The kids need this for school next week. Your husband and or your wife then say it, I'm mad because you didn't have no t tomato paste in the house. You got to buy some onion and then they mad because you didn't. You ran out of bread. You trying to get that and you need stockings and, or you need to go get the boys a haircut. Your mind ain't on Jesus. Your mind is on Jesus in spot. So he said, I understand all of that, y'all. I really, just, I really, that's why I give you Sundays. That's why I give you Sunday. You can come in here and your mind will be stayed on me the whole day if you do right. That's why I don't want you to do no servile work because I know you got all of this stuff that you have to do. I put it there. I know what you need to do. But then if you give me one, I gave you six days. You didn't have to do all of your shopping on Saturday. You chose to do that. Then you want to use part of my day to finish it up. When you got off work on Tuesday, you didn't have nothing to do. Why don't you swing by the store? The store is closed at 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Women, y'all can go to Ross up till 1 o'clock in the morning. Did y'all know that? Yes. Two of them. No. So support her, tell them where is that. <laughs> <laughs> she had me out there. At one like, ain't no Ross open till no 1 o'clock in the morning. Two of them. <laughs> oh, Holly. You ain't getting no peace. You ain't getting no peace till the rapture come. Y'all can walk around and listen to these old vain preachers all you want. Talking about ain't no evil going to come up on you. All right, keep on believing that lie. And see what happens. Amen. That's enough. Come on, shout Hallelujah. All right. Do we have any announcements? Come on, um, Mishi. What we preaching about? Sound doctrine. Offering, offering, tithes and offering. You can get up. You can tell them how much you enjoyed the service while you wait. When? When? Tell them how much you enjoyed the service. Oh, amen. That was a good message. Amen. <laughs> that was a really good message. Amen. Sound doctrine. Amen. The truth. Amen. amen. Tell me the truth. I don't care how much wrong I do, I like to hear the truth. Let me process it. Amen? Amen. Truth. Amen. Amen.
this offering over there. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. 20 years, amen. 20 years, amen. 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 Is that the offering? Can everybody please stand? We thank God for the message on tonight. We thank God for everything that He's doing for the growth, for our anniversary coming up, for our pastor and first lady church anniversary. Amen. Amen. That's it. Okay. Please bow your heads. In the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for the message on tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for just telling us the truth, Lord Jesus, about the sound doctrine, Lord Jesus. Help us, Father God, to just process it, Lord Jesus, and know what we have to do, Father God, Lord. We just thank you for our pastor, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our first family. We thank you for everybody that's here in attendance on tonight, Lord Jesus. We ask that you would just touch everybody in the congregation. Father God, every unspoken prayer request, Father God, Lord, you know us all, Lord Jesus. You know what we deal with, Lord Jesus, on a day-to-day. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the people, Lord Jesus, that's watching over the internet, Lord Jesus, and we just thank you, Father God, for saving us, Lord Jesus, and for setting us free, Lord Jesus. Lord, continue to dig around us, Father God. Continue to tell us the truth, Father God, of what we need to do to make it to heaven, Lord Jesus. We love you on tonight, Father God. We thank you for getting us home safely, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for our jobs, Lord Jesus. We thank you for food. We thank you for everything, Lord Jesus. We thank you for shelter to go home to, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just ask that you would just continue on to Just tell us the truth, Lord Jesus, and we will give you the praise and the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen.